This is the world's smallest country. The Vatican City State is less than half a square kilometer in size and home to around 800 people, one of whom is the Pope. The pontiff is not only the head of state, but is also head of the government of the Catholic Church, known as the Holy See. This institution has existed for the best part of two millennia and represents over one billion baptized Catholics worldwide. An old and secretive entity, the Holy See acts as a surprisingly powerful player in global diplomacy. This man shapes its foreign policy, Archbishop Paul Gallagher. Here are his key strategies on running the world's oldest diplomatic service. The Holy See is determined and remains committed to making a contribution to how things unfold in the world and how relations unfold between states and people. The Holy See's ambassadors, known as nuncios, represent the Pope in 183 countries and have a permanent presence at the United Nations. Here, the Pope and his diplomats lobby other states to advance the Church's world view. It argues against abortion and contraception, but also promotes peace. Nations and rulers interacted with the popes over the centuries, and that has continued to evolve and to change in, in, in up to our modern times. In Africa, papal envoys have mediated peace talks to end wars in Sudan, Ivory Coast and Burundi, but it can also be dangerous work. In 2003, the nuncio to Burundi was assassinated by rogue rebel gunmen for his part in negotiating a peace deal, ending the country's decade-long civil war. Pope Francis uh, comes with his own particular experience of being uh, a Latin American, being Argentinian, a pastor of a, a very big and important diocese. Pope Francis is the first non-European pontiff in modern times. He was at the centre of one of the biggest diplomatic coups of this century, acting as an intermediary in talks between Cuba and America. These talks ended more than half a century of frozen relations between the two countries. There has always been a tendency in the church to be focused on particular areas, Eurocentricism, North American centricism. I think what the Pope is trying to say is that let's have a, a global vision for a globalized world. Today, more than 60 million people are displaced worldwide. Pope Francis has said that this is one of the biggest global challenges of the 21st century. Votatori di speranza, a voi auguro che la speranza non diventi delusione o peggio disperazione. He believes it's a, a global problem, so it's something that we, we've all got to shoulder. In 2013, Pope Francis called the mass drowning of migrants off the coast of the Italian island of Lampedusa shameful. Fifteen days later, Italy launched Operation Mare Nostrum, a naval mission to rescue migrants at sea. If, if we reject the refugee, we in some ways induce in ourselves a certain indifference to the humanity of suffering around us. But the Catholic Church has been condemned for turning a blind eye to decades of human suffering within its own institutions. A series of sexual abuse scandals around the world. Pope Francis has pledged to address these crimes, which have damaged the Church's reputation. La Iglesia es consciente de este daño, o los chicos no se juegan. While there are calls to modernize the Catholic Church, and the way it's run. Behind the scenes, the Vatican remains a powerful force in global affairs. <laughs>